Welcome back, sewists. I have a semi-pattern making little simple project that I'm going to work on today. I actually saw someone on TV, and I don't even remember where, and they were wearing sort of a little cropped um, turtleneck, that cross front. It was like something you could throw over, throw over everything and be comfy and easy to wear. It was very cute. It was flattering because it hit right at the waist. So depending on what you wore it with, it can um, really create the nice longer leg, shorter to torso effect. Anyway, I loved it. I thought it was super cute. I've looked online. I've seen a few places. The one they were wearing was just um, knitted, a sweater knit. I'm going to make mine in velour because I'm shopping my stash and I'm using up things that I have. And this is actually left over from a beautiful velour top I made for my mom a couple of years ago. So I have plenty left. The way I want to make it is dolman style. Now I've talked many times how I love a raglan sleeve. I also really enjoy a dolman. And I have a beautiful dress that's coming up that's a vintage one that's also a dolman top, a dolman sleeve. So I went online. Instead of just drafting this um, from the beginning, I'm going to do the easy way and use something to, um, to start with. So I found two really cute basic dolmans that had either sort of a cowl or a turtleneck on them. And uh, so I ordered both of these. They're both quick sew. Once I got them, however, this one, which is more the shape, I think, the thing with all of these is they're drawings. So you don't really know till it's on the body exactly how it's going to fit. But this one, according to the technical drawing on the back, um, is a little higher in the sleeve. It looks, a li it looks like it might give a little closer fit through the armhole, which is what I want. However, the neckline is more of a crew neck and it's so tight that it, even though it's made out of a knit, it has a button and buttonhole in the back and it opens up. I don't want a keyhole back. I want to just slip it over. This one, and I will show you close-ups of these, the, um, it's much wider through the armhole. It's more boxy, but it has a really nice sized cowl. And when I look at it, the cowl doesn't look oversized according to the technical drawing. So I may do a little combination of both. I'm going to trace off this one first to get the sizing, then adjust the neckline so this one will fit. I want to add a cuff to it because I know I want, um, I just want the look of a little bit of a cuff and push up. I think that's gonna be more the style that I'm going for. And then I'm going to turn it into the crop length I want and do the little crossover thing. So all that's gonna happen over here in the pattern making section. Once that's done, it's going to be a breeze to sew together. It's gonna to be three pattern pieces or four pattern pieces with the neckline and a little hemming. It'll surge right together. It should go very fast in the sewing department. So, fit check back up the camera. It has a little seaming through here. I've actually made this a few times. I've done it where I um, do the uh, stripes going in opposite directions and they meet and it's really cute. I don't even own one of those anymore. I had one for a while that I loved. But super cute top. I'm pretty sure it's a uh, pattern on here. So if it is, I will put a picture of the title card and I will link it below if you want to make this uh, very fast top. It flattering and it's long. It's got an asymmetrical hem, which you'll probably see in a minute. And I am wearing not my itch to stitch jeans. I'm wearing a pair of old jeans. The ones that I um, showed how to extend the pockets way back in the day when I did a, a pattern on why women's jeans have short, shallow pockets and how useless they are and how you can extend that pocket. I'll also put a little picture of that up here and that'll link below too. All right, let's get pattern making. Here's a quick close-up of this gorgeous teal peacock colored velour. Oh, it feels amazing. It's already been washed and dried. I just love it. I'm super glad I've thought of something I can use the rest of this for. And then let me show you these. We're going to be looking through the plastic because I haven't even pulled them out. Here is the technical drawing showing the backside of this one. This is Quick Sew 1640. I also, I think I would make this dress. Like, this is super cute. I have a velvet right now that I think I would love that in. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, we're going to trace off this one first. Uh, so I'm going to just trace this front and back in the largest size. This one's an extra large. This one only goes to a large. So we're going to see how they fit in the neckline because I definitely want this cowl neck and it would be pretty easy to draft. And then I'm also gonna draft a cuff. All right, so I've opened this one up. 
Look at how great it is. Look at all the sizes, but it has a side gusset, which I don't want. So I think I'm just going to put this one away for now. However, I really am excited about the side gusset for something else because this would look so cute in accented fabrics. So definitely we'll be revisiting this one with a side gusset. Love it. We're going to put it away, however. I'm going to go on to this one because I don't want a side gusset for this project. All right, so I've just traced off the back. And I measured the center back length, and it is just about perfect to my waist. Just maybe a hint longer, but with hemming, etc., we're perfect. Instead of doing the little folded up edge um, for the hem, I'm cutting it off before that hem. And then I have made a two inch cuff. This is four inch because it'll get folded down, but a two inch cuff. I've also, this is would be 10 inches, which is too wide. So I made it about four and a half ish. Um, just to make it a little tighter so it fits better. So this is the back. I've increased it a little bit at the waist on both ends just to make it a little boxier um, for my purposes. So I've got the back drafted onto the front. Okay, we're onto the front. I have traced off the front as is. There it is. I've just added a little bit of the side like I did before. Now I am folding it back. This is very boring in the camera on itself so that I can continue this neckline because the way I'm seeing it is where the neckline is, the crossover is gonna come from the shoulder like this. So I'm gonna have two that cross, so it crosses in the front. So I need the full neckline. I need the full neckline on my front pattern piece to get the shape that I want. So I'm coming across the neck and down the shoulder a little bit. Back to the pattern. So if you see through, you can see where it's traced on the wrong side. I'm gonna go ahead and trace it on this side now, and then I'm going to draw my shape. I'm going to draw my curved shape for the front to get the crossover. And I've also just traced off the cowl as is, and we're about ready to cut. All right, can you see the shape? There's my neckline, my shoulder, the curve of the front into the sleeve. Boy, this is gonna be a breeze to sew together. We're ready to cut. All right, so I'm folded across. We want the stretch to go across the um, fabric, so this way. And I also held it up to make sure that I had the darker view. You can see how it looks dark that way. And if we looked at this way, it looks lighter. So I wanted to make sure I got the darker um, nap for how I'm cutting. So I'm gonna cut my back on the fold. I'm gonna open it up and cut two fronts flipping because they're too long to cut them on the fold. Um, as they are, and then out of the piece that's on the side, I'm gonna get my cuff and cowls, I hope. Fingers crossed. I may actually cut the cowl down. You can see it's right there. It's long. It's a big cowl, so I may make it shorter just to make it fit. We'll see. Put the collar in the cuffs and the collar piece folded. Can you see how big it is? It's tall. And you can do that being attached to the neck. Of course, this is half of it. It's also double wide, so it's cut on the fold. So I'm going to shorten it just a tiny bit um, because what I have left of my scrap down here is half an inch short. So it's not going to be that much smaller, but it's going to be a little bit shorter. So I'm going to just shorten it enough to get the pattern piece in my scrap and then the same my cuffs so it will easily fit in the scraps that are left over. I'm going to mark it because I want to make sure that I get my nap correct when I fold that down so that um, it's dark like the rest of it. So I'm going to mark um, so that I know uh, which piece to be on the outside, and which piece to be on the inside for that for the collar piece. All right, we're all most completely cut out and we're gonna go over and put this thing together and see if it looks like I had pictured in my head. Speaking of that, I did a few little short drawings of ideas that I had and I'll put a few of those in here um, while I finish cutting. Thank you. 
start by putting the front to the back along the shoulder and side seams, which is one of the things that's so fun about a dolman. This was one of the fabrics that I had in my stash for a while that I made my mom, that bluer shirt. All right, so here's my back cut on the fold. Oh no, sorry, this is my front. You can see how that's gonna crisscross. And then I'm going to have to gently steam this. Velour is like velvet and corduroy and all of those, these nappy fabrics that um, you can easily accidentally imprint in them with your iron. I'm going to use a scrap for pressing. It's also just like velvet in that you will have little tiny um, bits of fur everywhere. It, it definitely leaves little balls of fluff Putting in a few pins, just so I don't have any stretch. So you can see just the top of the sleeve. I'm going to do that for both sides and around underneath for both sides. It should be really easy. And then we'll add our collar. Or then I'll hem it. I'm very excited about this project. Not a very hard project. One that's been in my head. If I like this pattern and it turns out the way I'm thinking it's going to, I have some blue velvet. I'll put a picture up of my idea. I thought about doing this in a long skirt with the front slit and this, and then it'll look really cute um, in the velvet over a little black silk top or something. Um, would be really cute for winter. And then I also um, would like it in just like a nice sweater knit. So I'm going to look for a sweater knit too, because I have a feeling this is a kind of thing that I could throw on over t-shirt and jeans. It would look cute, it would be warm, it would be practical for where I live because like today we're in December and I woke up and it was 25 but it's going to be 60. Um, today and yesterday was about the same, it's, I mean we, we often are in the 40s for, we have a few cold days but it's never like you need really heavy coats every day here. We don't get a lot of snow. And if we do, it comes and goes pretty fast. Now, I'm going to remind you, the way this is cut, the stretch is along with this seam. So we don't want to stretch out this seam, and we want to be careful in pinning that we don't get any waves in it because the stretch is along with that seam. So we're just going to stitch these in. Quarter inch seam allowance. Trying to make sure I don't have too much press or foot pressure. I'm actually going to loosen my press. I heard a noise. <laughs> I vibrated a tool out of its place inside my case here. It's already starting to look like something. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the underarm now. One of the many reasons that dolmens are great. They are so fast to put together. All right, so now I'm going to go all the way around this outer edge. So I'm going to start up here in this corner, and it's just going to go all the way around to finish that edge off. I could um, switch this to the cover stitch and do it with the cover stitch too. Do I want to do that? Hmm, I think I might. That might be the easiest way ever to do this. I think I'm going to switch it to cover stitch. So back in a minute, I'm going to switch my machine over for cover stitch. I do have a video, if you have the same machine I do, I do have a video on how to switch to the cover stitch if you want to do it, but it's specifically to the Bernina 890. I think it's pretty similar on all of the newer Bernina machines. So if you're interested in that, it, I literally film myself doing it for the first time. So it's not like I did it perfectly, but I show how easy it really is for a first time person to do it on this machine. So I'm going to switch it over and I'm going to uh, do a little close up for you and show you what it looks like to do the cover stitch all the way around. All right, we're all set up for cover stitch. 
you have to change the foot, you change the needles, you change your settings, you change your threading, you change the little throat plate, lots of things. Here is my sample stitch, just to see how it looks. I set it for wide this time, mainly because this fabric rolls a little bit and I just thought I would have better luck. So I am now ready to, um, I'm gonna pin it down so that I don't have any problems with it and I'm going to go all the way around my outer edge and finish this off. All right, so I'm all set up to do my cover stitch. I've got it pinned back for cover stitching. I'm all ready to go and I realized I made a mistake. So I'm still gonna do the cover stitch. That part does not need to change, but I realized up here at this shoulder, this should have been caught when I did my shoulder seam. So I'm going to release both shoulder seams up here so I can cross this over and catch those in the shoulder just far enough to get that little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and hem it first because the hem needs to be done to do that. So here is how the order of operation should have gone. We should have sewn together the underarm and side seam, then hemmed all the way around, crisscrossed it, caught it in that shoulder, and then done both shoulder seams. So amended sewing directions on Stacy's made up project that I'm doing right now. I'm ready to do my cover stitch, however, and then we'll fix the shoulder. I'll have to put the machine back to my regular stitching, all of those things. All of those things have to happen. Now I have a lot of pins in here and you want to remove the pins um, as you go, especially when serging. Now I don't have my knife engaged because I'm cover stitching, but uh, there's a lot of needles and stuff to hit when uh, working at the sergers, and we do not want to hit any of those. So nice and quiet when you're cover stitching. You realize how much the noise is just the knife. see here's my needles you can see how far apart they are you also can see that the knife is not engaged so I'm just folding the edge and stitching along the edge so I can hem it and this is how it looks on the back side if I had planned better I would have moved it over so I was catching this raw edge I'll probably come in and trim this away um, just so I don't have any raw edge and you can see how it uh, frays it just leaves little pills everywhere but it's also leaving a very nice flat hem All right, so here's the backside hemmed. This is how it looks. I have torn out one, torn out, I have pulled out a few stitches in one shoulder, and you can see how I pulled it up to match, and I'm just sandwiching that in the shoulder. That's the thing I messed up before, so that when I catch it, now that's all caught in the shoulder and will be um, finished and look good. I've gotta do this shoulder yet. It's super easy to pull out serging stitches. What I do, especially since I don't need to take the whole thing out, I come back as far as I need and I clip the needle stitches. So I clip those needle stitches, pull out those, the, I clip those stitches and then I pick out a few um, of those stitches and then I just pull the whole line of needle will come out. I do that for both needles and then the rest just unravels right away. Super easy. Takes just seconds to pick out serger stitching. So right here, can you see that's where I've broken my stitches. Now I'm gonna pick out just a couple of these to make them a little longer. So can you see those stitches? Now I can't do this one-handed, but I'm just gonna pull this thread and it'll pull all the way out. Then I'm gonna come back and pull this other one all the way out. You just pull, 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 it just comes right out and then this will unravel, I'll show you. All right, let's see if this works. Got my foam propped, so. Here's my thread. I'm just gonna pull that one's out. I'm gonna grab this one. Pull that one out. And then these just pull right off. And because I broke my threads, it only went as far as I wanted it to. Super fast. Okay, so now that I'm fixing the shoulder, I have one shoulder that has to be caught in the middle, and then the other one is from behind. We don't want to cross them both because it doesn't work in the middle. You just need one of them behind the other, so only one needs to get caught in the shoulder. So I've got this one up. I'm 
hoping I, um, I'm hoping my spatial reasoning is right and this is the right shoulder. I think it is. I will live with it however it turns out. But anyway, I'm going to catch that in. I'm going to serge both of these and we're ready to finally move on to cowl and cuff. Okay, I have hemmed it and I have fixed my shoulder mistake. Let me show you where we're at. Can you see the crossover? This is exactly how I had it in my head. So I'm thrilled about that. Nothing has been pressed yet. I have a scrap, a big enough scrap over there that I can um, lay this face down for pressing to protect it. We're now going to take our cuff and our collar and we're going to sew up the back seam or uh, like on the cuff, it's the, uh, it's the wrist seam down here on this long collar piece. My card was full. Okay, so what I was saying is we're gonna do collar and cuffs. Just sew it up a quarter of an inch. I've got one done. The thing I'm going to have to really watch is when I sew this on my nap so that it looks proper. Looks proper. I don't want to um, have my nap long. Especially on the collar. It will be less noticeable on the cuff, but. We're going to take our collar and our cuffs. We're going to fold them back on themselves so that it's self-lined. Now this seam on the collar will be, I'm going to put in the center back. You could also put it on a shoulder seam. We're going to just line up our little ends here. If yours rolls like mine does, if it's easier for you to go around and just baste this edge together first, do it. Um, I'm just going to put a few pins in to hold it. Make sure I keep my seam lined up here. And then I have got to figure out my nap so that I get the correct one sewn on. I'm gonna do this for the collars and the cuffs. This is the way I want it. This is my right side. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the little cuffy cuffs. I made them pretty tight because I have another thing with the cuff like this and the cuff was a little wide and it stretches out. It wouldn't on this because it's a different fabric, but I want my cuff kind of tight because then it gives a neater look on the sleeve too. You get a little bit of a blouse in the sleeve. So here's my cute little cuff. All right, and then we're going to just pin these to the garment. I'm gonna put the seam on the seam for my cuff and there should be, you'll have to slightly stretch your cuff depending on how you do yours. I uh, made mine just a little bit smaller, which is typical so that when you stretch the cuff to the sleeve, you get a little bit of, um, it eases in and it gives you a little bit of blousing, which is what I was hoping for. So, and then we're just gonna zip around all of these, just surge them on and that's it, it's done. I actually threaded up my machine, but I haven't needed the sewing machine at all. This was 100% done on the overlock because I chose to do the cover stitch. All right, so I'm just going to pin all this on. I'm not going to make you watch me because it's super boring. I'm going to do the same right sides together. So whichever your nap is that you want to show, that let me make sure I put that on. Since I have a seam on the top and the bottom, I did. I put it on upside down. I don't want the seam to show, so I want to put it on the under sleeve, and I put it on the top instead. So I'm going to take that off and flip it over. I'm going to pin on my collar, and then I will serge it on. So I'll come back with you when I'm ready to serge. I'm going to do some pinning for a bit. Alexa, pause. All right, we're all pinned in. It's hard to tell, but I have right sides together. So I've got my collar and my cuffs. I pinned them all so I can just sit here and surge them and it's done. I'll meet you over at, uh, at the other end of the room and try it on and show you how it turned out. I'm very excited to try it on. I'm feeling this is gonna be one of those easy to throw on wear projects. Plus I love the fabric. Because there are so many layers, I will definitely be checking this seam to make sure that none of the layers slipped apart and I have a That's very easy to do when doing collars or crew necks or, you know, ribbing, anything like that. This one right here has got four layers. Let's 
check it and make sure I don't have any holes. Make sure I don't have any holes. All right, let's go over and try it on. Okay, let me show you how it looks. I had to go change my shirt. My shirt that I was wearing was too close to the color of this top and you really hardly could tell where one ended and the other began. I even tucked the shirt in so you can see the crop level of it. Isn't that cute? Well, this is what I had in my head. This is what I was thinking. I do like it a lot. Now I folded down the cowl. I did shorten this a tiny bit, but this is a big, tall cowl, so you could wear it. You could scrunch it if you'd rather have more of a cowl like that. I folded it more like a turtleneck. For me, I still even have my necklace on underneath. <laughs> but I'm really happy. Crosses over. Simple dolman style. Very fast. So I'm getting ready to go down and eat lunch. So I did this whole thing in a morning, <laughs> which I think is great. I love a project like that. And it is warm. It feels great. Oh, the velour is just so nice. And this color, this sort of somewhere between peacock and emerald. It's quite a thing. Easy to wear. I hope this inspires you to take one pattern and maybe turn it into something else. It's often easier to uh, not start from ground zero with a pattern making something like this. I didn't have to dra drape or um, draft an entire top. I could take one that existed and make some very minor changes to turn it into something completely different. All right, I'll see you next week for another fun sewing video.